for having me here. Um, I'm pretty fortunate. Um, when I got out of the Navy after 30-some years and decided to run for Congress, when I went down to Washington, Steny Hoyer, who's a great supporter of labor, had told me I'd be on the Intelligence Committee because I had Navy's anti-terrorism unit after 9-11 and gone over into Afghanistan. I asked to get out of it and to be on the Education and Labor Committee. Yeah! Yeah! past EFCO, of which I was a co-sponsor last year, voted for it out of my committee and voted for it in the House floor that went over to the Senate. The Senate where it sat all of the last couple years. So we brought it back again. I am a co-sponsor of it. It will get through. EFCO will succeed. When why? My thing is, hey, I'm not a politician. I've been, I'm too new. But all I know about legislators is they legislate about people who have undue influence or power over someone else. Think about it. The poll tax for African Americans. How wrong. That's and right. we changed it. That's Think right. about it. A woman who has the right to vote, but didn't years ago, and we changed that by going to all the legislators of this nation. And are the facts there about intimidation and firing? They are. George Bush's NRLB study of 2007 said it all. About 50% of the time, of the 400 companies they surveyed, when a union member tried to, or someone came in and tried to organize and someone was involved in the company, they were intimidated or fired. And 32% of the time, when you got to the right to actually go to contract, one third of the time you never got there. My point of this is, I wish I could talk as well as Mike Doyle. <laughs> I mean, I fly wing on him just like in the Navy all the time. But for me, the facts are what have to prevail. There is an injustice being done today. And I intend to be there with Mike, flying on his wing, to make sure that EFCA gets through. Thank you very Thank you. much.